you probably have heard the phrase, a theology of glory. A theology of glory is when you do right things, but for wrong reasons. It's when you believe that doing good things or good works should earn you an easier life or more respect or a higher position. In other words, it's when your good works are designed to accomplish something for yourself, not for God, not for others. And I describe a, a theology of glory when we make our faith all about us. It's an easy trap to fall into because it's so easy to think about ourselves. It's so easy to think that the good things that we do should earn us rewards. It's an insidious trap too because we're often unaware of it until we've fallen into it. And the clamp has sprung shut and clamped down on us. The theology of glory has an opposite, and that is the theology of the cross. The theology of the cross is all about Jesus, all about what he did by sacrificing himself upon the cross. See, because only his death on the cross gains us complete forgiveness, forgiveness of all of our sins. And having that complete forgiveness of all of our sins is the only thing that allows us to do any good that we do. And of course, chief among any of those good works is bearing our own crosses for the glory of God and for the benefit of others. It's not something that we design. It's just something that faith does. And an apple tree does not figure out a plan for bearing apples. It doesn't boast about the fact that it bears apples. It's just what an apple tree does. And a spirit-filled Christian does not have a design for works to be good. Nor does he boast about his good works it's just the supernatural result of faith. Whatever good works we do is not us doing them, but the Holy Spirit working through the faith that he created in us. We're the clay. He's the potter. It is his covenant working through us. God said it through the prophet Jeremiah, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. God said that, not us. God did that, not us. In holy baptism, the Holy Spirit came to dwell within us as his temple. And because he dwells within us, we do good works. In our gospel for today, though, we see James and John pursuing a theology of glory. Now, you know, it's hard to blame them. I mean, who among us, if we got to walk and talk with Jesus on earth, would not at least try to use our earthly position to secure a, a higher heavenly position on his right or on his left in heaven. Well, I mean, it seems obvious that any of us with even just a, a smidgen of ambition would give it a try. Why not leverage the suffering that you're experiencing as a follower of Christ on earth to get a leg up on everybody else in heaven? It's just human nature. And of course, then we see the other disciples responding equally with a theology of glory. They became indignant because who were James and John to get front row seats in heaven? What had they done to deserve such merit? And of course, that's the point, isn't it? What had they done? Nothing. 
They had done nothing to merit anything. No matter how hard they had tried, they were still corrupted by sin, just as all of us are. I don't care whether you're as holy as Mother Mary herself, you are still fully corrupted by original sin. So long as we focus on any aspect, any aspect at all of what we have done, we're going to be swimming in that pool of the theology of glory. We are called to serve, <coughs> not to be served. And frankly, as people of faith, being served in any capacity makes us just a little bit uncomfortable. We are the servants, not the ones served. And it should make us a little uncomfortable. I've worked on my preaching craft for 40 years, striving to be excellent at public speaking and then formally studying communication and psychology and theology in order to improve my God-given abilities. But every single time I preach, I begin with a prayer. And it's first and foremost a prayer of confession because I know that I have not done enough. <clears throat> Whatever I have done, it wasn't enough. I should have spent more time with the original text. I should have practiced the delivery once more. I should have paid closer attention to the biblical context. I should have worked more on my rhythm and my language. So I conclude every prayer before I preach asking the Holy Spirit to take what I've done and to use it for His glory. And by golly, he does it. <clears throat> That's the theology of the cross. Just a mystery. What he does with the stuff that we've done, no matter how poor it is. He takes our offerings and he shapes them and he forms them and he focuses on them just where they need to be. He will take the worst sermon I've preached and use it somehow for his glory. See, we know that no matter how much we've done in any realm, it's never sufficient because our sufficiency is found only in Christ. Christ takes our good works and magnifies them to the cross so that they accomplish God's will, so that they glorify God. That's what Luther tried so hard to explain to the people of his day who thought you had to become a monk, a nun, or a priest in order to be considered a, a good person in God's eyes. And Luther wanted to understand, it doesn't matter if you're a priest or a housekeeper or a banker, nothing. Nothing you do will be acceptable. But by the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, everything you do in faith will be perfected and glorified. So if you're a volunteer, or you're a business owner, or you're a musician, know that the Holy Spirit is taking what you do in faith and glorifying God with it. God claimed you to be his people. God sent the Holy Spirit himself to dwell in you. How can you be anything less than stellar? The power of God shines through you. Never think that what you do for God's glory is anything less than magnificent, regardless of how great or how small it is by worldly standards. You have been baptized with the baptism with which Jesus Christ himself was baptized. You are invited each week to drink from the cup from which Jesus drank. Whatever you do, 
with Him abiding in you, you do magnificently. Can you pray for others? Then do it. Can you give an offering? Then do it. Can you show love to another person? Then do it. These are all amazing works that the Holy Spirit will bless 30, 60, or 100 fold. These, these things that you do for the glory of God, these are the things that change lives. These are the things through which the Holy Spirit will win souls for the kingdom of God.